Welcome back to another Ballet Physics tutorial. In this quick video, I'm going to show you the ray tracing in Ballet Physics. So if you don't know, ray is basically a line, more precisely a line segment. In Ballet Physics, a ray has a start point right here and an end point right here. So a ray is going from here to here. It's like a laser or like a rope or something. And if there is object between the start point and the end point, for example, here is a sphere, then we know that this sphere was hit by this ray. Why does it good for us? It has several uh, usages. For example, it uh, can be used as a trajectory. So if the start point is, for example, the player who is shooting a weapon or some kind of arrow or anything, then we know that the trajectory of that uh, whatever the player is shooting is this ray. And this is the maximum length the weapon can shoot. And if this uh, ray is hitting an enemy, then we know that the player actually shot the enemy, although it has other usage as well. So for example, for your AI, your artificial call intelligence, so if this, uh, if this is not your player, but uh, an entity in your game, so some kind of animal or enemy or something which is controlled by AI, then with ray tracing you can know whether it sees something. So for example, here is the enemy, and if here is the player, then it can see the player because obviously it hits with this ray. Uh, sometimes your ray needs to be give back just the closest hit point and the closest object, so like this, but other times other object as well. So here is a cone as well, as you can see this is a cone. You, you have to give this back as well, and you have to give it back, for example, in case of a bullet, because a bullet can shoot one enemy and go through the enemy to another enemy, and in this case you have to give back both. But if, for example, as it is a viewing vector, so it's a viewing ray, as I have said for the AI, then it only sees the closest object, so only the player, and the player is actually... Uh, so the, uh, because of the player, the enemy can't see the other object, which is behind the player, obviously. So that is about the ray tracing. It will be a very quick tutorial. It will be four, five line at maximum. Uh, so let me go to the display or the main, doesn't really matter, somewhere in the main loop preferably. I will do it in the display, although this is not really a displaying stuff because we will not display the ray, but uh, I will do it right here. I could do it right here as well after I have set the hit point equal to false. So uh, what I'm going to do is basically create a callback. Okay, I've just opened up the BT collision word header file and this is where the callback is defined. This is the callback, actually, ray result callback. As you can see, it has a few public members, like the closest hit point, which is obviously giving back the closest hit point fraction. Okay, not that obvious. So what it does is basically giving back a number between 0 and 1. So for example, if the collision happened about halfway, then it will give back 0 0.5. If the collision happened at 0.5 way, so for example, if your ray is 10 unit long and it, the collision happened at one unit, then it will give back 0.1. So it's a it's just a simple fraction determining the distance. So for example, for closer object, the the damage of the weapon is greater than for further object because the bullet goes quicker in this way or something it you, it's, is a very useful stuff okay the collision object will give back a bt collision object it is not a rigid body we have already seen the collision object the rigid body actually inherit from this collision object it has our very useful structure which i have implemented in the last video this bullet object so we can set the id rgb and hit point for the object which was hit by the ray Okay, it has some collision filtering. I will not go into this right now. And uh, flags, I haven't used actually these flags. Okay, but actually we will not use the ray result callback. Actually, we can uh, instantiate be this because it has a pure virtual member function right here. The add single result. This is a pure virtual, so we can't uh, actually instantiate this. But there is two. There are two structures inherited. So there are two classes inherited from this base class. The closest ray result callback, which is giving back only one body, the closest body. So closest if there is a box right here as well, it will only still give back this sphere. And it also has another inherited class, which is all hits ray result callback. It will give back all of these objects. So it will give back the sphere, the uh, cone, and the box as well. So it will, uh, as you can see, it has a BT aligned object array. It is kind of like STD vector, just it has a different name. 
okay uh, that was it about uh, let me actually create first of all let me actually create the closest and I will copy and paste it so closest re result callback okay and it is in the BT collision world in the public so we can actually create it but we have to write BT collision world colon colon to create it because it is in the BT collision world class as you can see if I go up it is inside this class so we have to specify where it is and this constructor actually waiting for two parameter if I remember correctly which is two vector uh, right here as you can see a ray from word and a ray to word these are two uh, coordinates in word space so word space mean that uh, it's, uh, it's not relative okay and it's waiting for the start coordinate and the end coordinate so what else could we give like I'm going to give the position of the player and the looking direction uh, so right here the, this will be the position of the player the position uh, and the player is looking in this way but this is a bit short so I will multiply it by a big number and then this point will be, uh, be uh, here so it will be a very long vector so I will give the start point which is my camera's location if you don't know I have a camera class right here I have used that so far and it has actually a, a method called get location which is getting the location of the camera it's waiting for a BT vector free, not a vector free D I have used, so I have to cast it to a BT vector free. So cam dot get location and I get the X. And let me actually just copy and paste this and get the Y and the Z. Okay, so what have I done so far is initialize the first parameter as the position of my camera. The second parameter will also be a BT vector free, so BT vector free and it's waiting for uh, the other point in word coordinate and for that I'm going to create a local variable because if you don't know this I have a function a method in this camera class called get vector which is get the looking vector which where the camera is looking at the problem is that this using vector uses a cosine and sine function and these are re really expensive function and don't want to use it uh, that much so I just create a variable so I don't have to uh, call that free time this method but only once so I call this direction and this will be equal to the camera dot get vector the get vector is basically get the looking vector and I just multiply it by a big number the multiplying operation is overloaded for my vector 3d class if you haven't seen that video and yeah that's about it and now I have this direction vector so I can just put a path as the second parameter this uh, direction did I call it direction yeah I called direction dot X direction dot Y and finally direction dot Z perfect we have the callback function the next step is to do the actual ray tracing to do the ray tracing we have a member function in the word so I get from the word the member function called ray test this ray to s member function is actually waiting for the start point in word space and the end point in word space uh, which is exactly the same as the parameter for the constructor of the uh, of the closest ray result so I will just copy this I'm not sure why does the ray test and the constructor of the closest ray result callback I just realized I haven't given a name for this did I so I just call it callback or I should call it uh, ray callback right we need the name okay so it's waiting as the first two parameter it is the exact same parameter as you have passed to the ray callback so I just control C control V into here and the last parameter is just the callback so I just write ray callback into here perfect we are almost finished we have made the ray tracing one last thing is remaining is to actually get back if if we hit something because obviously if we're looking up and there is nothing there we don't hit anything and of course we have to find out which object did we hit if we hit any so I go back to the collision word header file again and we find this method right here has hit this has hit obviously true if it has hit something false if it is not so if the co uh, ray callback dot has hit so if we actually hit something then I'm just going to make the hit equal to true to do so I'm going to get the object from this callback 
So if you don't remember, we have a, this M collision object right here. Let me actually copy this dot M collision object. Then I just get the user pointer from this, uh, similarly like what I did in the callback function. So get user pointer. And now I have to cast this pointer to our type, so this bullet object, bullet object pointer. So now I have the bullet object, like in this case, and I can do something like make the hit equal to true. So again, if we hit with the ray, uh, if we hit something with the ray, then it becomes uh, red, if you remember from the last tutorial. And uh, yeah, that's it. We have finished if our parentheses are right. So we can actually compile this program right now. We could have compiled it if we wouldn't have a mistype in here as the direction uh, the di right here. Direction actually, C and the T. Okay, now I can try it. And uh, I have the same type of mistype because of the control C, control V, so it's direction. And now if I compile it and run it, then as you can see whatever I am looking at is turning black because of the ray tracing. Uh, but only one object so if I go up something like this as you can see only the closest object the cone doesn't turn uh, red in this case although we are actually seeing, seeing it because it is there. So what I can do is actually change this closest ray result callback to this other callback which is called all hit ray result callback like this and it has another vector like like here this m collision object as you can see it is it is like an uh, std vector so this bt align object array is pretty much just a uh, different name of the vector it's not really just the type that it, they made a complete class for this but uh, most of the operation which has for a vector is actually made for this aligned object array so there is no real um, so there is no real reason to learn that Okay, so what I have to do is go through that array. The has hit is useful uh, again. So for int i equals zero, i less than the size of this, so size i plus plus, and then I get the i element from this. So I just write m collision object array. Uh, so this i, okay. And yeah, that's all the change I need to do. And now if I compile and I make this ray callback dot right here as well, because this M collision object obviously in here in the class. And now if I compile it and run it, as you can see, at first glance, we get the same result. But if I go here, as you can see, all the objects which I hit with the ray actually turning uh, a red, not only one, but any, so all of them. Of course you can get now the other parameters for this, like the heat fraction. Actually let's take a look at the heat fraction, just to see if it is work or not. I actually I haven't used that, I have to admit that, but it's never too late to try. Okay, so I'm going to write out the ray, ray callback dot m dot m heat fractions i, so I get the i element. And then, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, because this is a float, the BT scalar, which is either a float or a double, depending on uh, whether you compile it as a floating point uh, library or a double point, but usually just a float. So STD add line, and let's see the uh, distances. Okay, if I compile it and run this right now, uh, actually you can see the terminal, uh, now you can okay kinda you can okay and actually if if I'm not looking anywhere as you can see the has hit is four so we don't get any numbers going but if I'm looking at something then I get the distance actually the fraction which is not really the distance but if you multiply it by the length of your endpoint minus start point then uh, then of course this would be a point uh, distance okay as you can see I can go closer the numbers become uh, smaller and I can go farther away so this is how it works, and uh, this was really the tutorial, so thank you for watching and have a great day.